A huge thanks to Brian for sponsoring this video. Cosine of one degree. Try it out for yourself. And if you're done, keep watching the video for the solution. A spoiler alert, the solution looks a bit very disgusting. Um, yeah, <laughs> let us dive right in. By the way, video sponsored by the wonderful people over on Brilliant. You can find a lot of mathematics, physics, etc. courses over on their website. More information at the end of the video. It's absolutely amazing. Go over there, check it out. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, cosine of one degree, we want to find the closed expression, basically for this thing right here. Um, and for this to work, we kind of need to jump into the complex realm for now. Namely, what we want to do is we want to turn the cosine into its Euler expression. Just a little reminder, the cosine of x can be expressed as e to the rx plus e to the negative rx divided by 2. That right here is the Euler expression, just stemming from Euler's formula and basically taking the even part of um, the expression e to the ix. Now, we could plug all of this in, and then we would have e to the i times 1 degree. I think you already see that this is already pretty fucking disgusting. So we need to rewrite 1 degree in terms of pa, because this is what we can handle in the complex realm when we take a look at the complex phase diagram. So what is 1 degree exactly? That's our question right here. Now, remember that 180 degrees corresponds to um, pa. Meaning if we were to solve this right here, doing cross multiplication, multiplying this and then dividing by what's left here, we are going to get that um, basically pa times 1 degree divided by 180 is what we are looking for in terms of pa, basically. So 1 degree basically corresponds to pa divided by 180. Okay, so what we get is that cosine of 1 degree is the, is the same as cosine of pi divided by 180. And that is good, we can work with this, we can plug this into the Euler definition. Giving us overall that this is e to the r pi divided by 180 plus e to the negative r divide, uh, times pi divided by 180 divided by 2. Okay. Um, so far, so good. We are done. I mean, that's a close expression. I think guys watching. <laughs> no, we won't turn this into something more ugly because this still looks way too fine. That is, seriously still looks way too fine. Um, what we are going to do now is we are going to jump into our boy, the complex plane. Remember, this right here is the real part of a function and this right here is r times the real part of a function. And what we are going to do is we are going to turn this into something that we are pretty much familiar with. Okay, This is something that we want to do now. And what we are going to do is we are going to factor out a bit of stuff. What we are going to do is we are going to factor out um, so this right here, this e to the r times pi divided by 180 is the same as e to the r times pi over 2 times and now 1 divided by 90. Why is this good? This is good because we can make use of the exponentiation rules in a second. We are going to go through the same spiel here e to the negative r times pi over 2 times 1 divided by 90 and all of this divided by 2. Now if we got something to the a times b this is the same as the something to the a to the b. Meaning what we're going to get is we're going to get um, e to the r times pi over 2 to the 1 divided by 90 plus e to the negative r times pi over 2 to the 1 divided by 90 divided by 2. And why did we go through all of this? Well, because e to the r times pi over 2, for example, is something that we are really familiar with. This is just one of the ways to rewrite um, the, the expression for cosine of one degree. Namely, if we were to go 90 degrees, because this is pi over 2, upwards in the counterclockwise direction on the complex plane, we are going to land at r. Meaning, what we got right here, this expression, is nothing other than r. 
Now, if we were to go negative pi over 2 downwards in the clockwise direction, we are going to land at negative r. Okay, so this part right here is nothing other than negative i. But we can do better than this. What we are going to do is we are going to take a look at the definition of our friend r and also negative r. Maybe what we are going to do is we are going to see how i is defined in a regular case, namely i squared is equal to negative 1. This is just how complex numbers were basically invented. Someone was asking which real number squared is going to give you a negative number. Well, that's our complex um, our complex num number, it's, it's, it's i, okay? Um, I'm forgetting what it's called. Complex variable, complex number, what is it? No, it's just a complex constant r, right? Am I being fucking stupid right now? It's just r, it's our boy r. I'm forgetting right now, <laughs> there was probably an annotation here. But now what we can do is we can take the positive and negative square root, giving us that r can be expressed as plus or minus the square root of negative 1. If some smartest kid from your school is saying, well, r is the square root of negative 1, he's wrong. That's just the positive branch or the main branch. r refers to both the positive and negative branch um, of square root of 1 and negative 1 in that case. Meaning what we can do is we can plug plus or minus square root of negative 1 into here. Also, I want you guys to notice that negative r if we were to multiply both sides by negative 1, we're going to get negative or plus square root of negative 1. We're going to talk about the two cases at the very end. So if you were to plug all of this in, what we're going to end up with is nothing other than, namely, at first, plus or minus um, the square root of negative 1. So plus or minus the square root of negative 1 to the 1 over 90, please put all of this into square roots, that's really important, and then plus negative or positive square root of negative 1 to the 1 divided by 90 divided by 2. And if we now go ahead and turn this 1 divided by 90 into just the 90th root of all of that, we are going to get that an expression for the cosine of one degree is overall the... I, I, I told you from the start, it's not very nice looking, okay? The square root of plus or minus the square root of negative one plus the 19th root of the square root of negative plus the square root of negative one divided by two. Now you might ask yourself, Popo Flemmy, which one is correct? You got plus and minus here. Which branch is the correct one? Well, let's go through the cases. Let us start with the positive branch, so the first branch that we got right here. So our first case is, if we go through the positive branch, we are going to get the 19th root of um, the square root of negative 1 plus the 19th root of negative the square root of negative 1 divided by 2. Now what about the other one? We're going to go the negative way. We're going to get the 19th root of negative the square root of negative 1 plus the 19th root of positive this time, the square root of negative 1 divided by 2. And do you know what the cool thing about the addition of complex numbers is and also real numbers? Okay, but real numbers are just a subset of the complex numbers. So, yeah, uh, um, yeah. <laughs> um, is that it commutes. So it really doesn't matter if you have the positive or negative branch at first, you can just commute those, turn those around, meaning they are going to give us in each case the same expression. So they are both the same. So we also know that this right here is overall just the cosine of one degree. And like it or not, this is what evolution looks like, okay? Evolution just shows you what the perfect self of a creature is like. Um, and this right here is the cosine of one degree and just looks, it, it doesn't look nice. It's, it's just a fun thing to play around and it's rather clickbaity. This is why I made the video. And if you did enjoy what you have seen today, if you enjoy complex numbers or playing around with square roots or maybe trigonometric functions, then the contents of today's sponsored print might be the perfect fit for you. 
Now, if you're not familiar with Brilliant yet, let me give you a little spicy introduction about what their service is all about. Now, Brilliant is your source for some of the best online learning content that you can find out there on the internet. And in my opinion, it's the best source for online learning on the internet, apart from YouTube. But it's a whole different story because you really can compare the things that you find on Brilliant with YouTube because it's a whole other level of quality and expertise being shown in their course concept. Now speaking of the course concept, what is it all about? Let's say you want to learn something about complex numbers. Then you're going to go into their math section. There are other sections too, physics, computer science, philosophy, etc. They got everything in STEM covered that you could wish for. But let us stay at complex numbers for a second. Gonna go into the math section and there you find them, complex numbers. And now the courses are gonna start off with a few analogies from, for example, the real numbers and how a number line is gonna suddenly transform by rotation into this complex plane that we have looked into to derive ourselves an expression for square root of negative one, basically. And it's just magical because this is what Brilliant is all about. Learning in a visual manner and they are so good at it. They are just so freaking good at it that you just can't stop. Once you start with one of their courses, you don't want to stop. You want to learn something new. You are going to feel the need to dive deeper into the topics and to broaden your horizon of knowledge that you initially started with, not knowing anything about a certain topic, but now you are feeling like an expert in the said topic. It's just really hard to explain in words how good Brilliant is at what it does and how their graphical interpretation of problems just makes such a huge difference in comparison to the regular system that you find at schools where just a teacher stands right in front of a blackboard. It's just something completely different. You can play around with graphics and, and, and vary the parameters of a graph and so on and so forth. The geometry section is just amazing. And as mentioned before, it's hard to explain just how good it is. And the best way to just see for yourself what Brilliant is all about and if it's something for you is by trying it out. Use your own two hands and make clicky clicky on the linky linky down there. Brilliant.org slash flamblemaths. With it you're going to get 30 day free trial to try out everything on Brilliant for yourself. And if it feels like it's something for you, something that you want to learn from in the future and over a longer period of time, then seriously make use of the link and get 20% of an annual premium subscription, which is a fantastic deal. If you just consider how much content they are putting out on a regular basis and how much love and care they put into all those animations and the visuals and the things you are playing around with. So definitely make sure to check it out and support the channel this way. And this concludes today's video. And now I'm going to make a flip. No, I'm not going to do one. Um, I'm being stupid here. Um, by the way, Fundamental Theorem of Engineering buy the merch to support the channel and also don't forget to check out Flemmy's Wood, my second channel where I do woodworking um, just like you can see here with the back. Um, still not done yet, I have so much stuff to do um, but looking pretty fine right? All the wood here, um, pretty good. Also down here, <laughs> took a really long time to already do this part of the wall but yeah um, if you enjoy stuff like this just DIY projects and woodworking and so on sometimes also metalworking and the like then subscribe to Flemmy's Wood too and up in the next video I wish you guys a flammable day. See ya! That's a new one. I didn't do this before. That's a completely new one. I never dove down before. Is dove the past tense of dive? I, I think so. See ya.